Because the 
because this God is too good. Oh, oh I will worship you forever. How love you forever. The ministry of the senior pastor and Thrument Assembly, Reverend Deji Olabode. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great privilege to be back in God's presence uh, this evening on the second session of our three days of glory. Let us lift up our hands to Jesus and thank him. And let's thank God for what he did in the first service. Let's thank him for the word that came let's thank him for the light that came let's thank him because that light will not fail it will be a light that will shine in darkness and that the darkness in the lives of god's people will not be able to uh, comprehend it father we have returned to say thank you thank you for searching us thank you for examining us thank you for showing us what to do Thank you for exposing our aches. Thank you for light. We're asking, Father, in this second session, let your light shine with greater intensity. We humble ourselves before you. And we're asking that you would teach us. You are a God who hides it from the eyes of the wise, but who reveals it to babes. We're asking, oh God, that the meekness needed to learn from you today will be granted to us. Lord, we ask that by these teachings, let burdens be removed, let yokes be destroyed, 
Let miracles break out. Let utterance be given to your servant. Let entrance be given to your people. Confirm with signs and wonders following the things we've brought before you. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' matchless name. Amen. Good morning, or good evening, rather. It's a great privilege to be back with you this Lord's Day. Our anchor scripture is still the same. It's our month of turnaround. Psalms 126 is still where we are. The Bible says, when the Lord turned or brought back the captivity of Zion, we were like those who dreamed. Then our mouth was filled with laughter, our tongue which singeth. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad. Bring back our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. Those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. He who continually goes forth, weeping, bearing precious seed for soil, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. For a second emphasis, I would like Isaiah 5, verse 13 to verse 14. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. Their honorable men are famished. Their multitudes dried up with thirst. Therefore, hell has enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure. And their glory and their multitude, their pomp, and he that rejoices shall descend into it. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. In Jesus' mighty name. I want to share briefly this evening on how to handle personal loss or captivity. How to handle personal loss or captivity. Father, bless your word. Transform our lives in Jesus' mighty name. We are still in verse 1 of Psalms 126. When the Lord turned the captivity of Zion, we are like them that dreamed. I pray that this month that your captivity will turn in the name of the Lord Jesus. I pray that this month there shall be answers on your behalf in the name of the Lord Jesus. I pray that this month your wait will be over in the name of the Lord Jesus. I pray that this month my God will wipe away your tears in the name of Jesus. My God will convert your mourning into dancing, your sorrow into joy. In the name of Jesus, I pray that this month what you have long waited for will come to pass. It will come to be. Indeed, God will turn things around for you. In Jesus' precious name. So this scripture began with a contradiction saying that God's people were in captivity. Is it possible for God's people to be in captivity? In the previous service, I established that it is a capital yes. One reason why God's people could be in captivity is because they have no knowledge. And because they have no knowledge, the Bible says they are honorable men are famished. Their multitude are dried up with thirst. Hell, therefore, has enlarged herself, opened her mouth without measure, and the glory of the people has descended to hell. The multitude of the people descended to hell. Their pomp, even those who are rejoicing, descended into it because they had no knowledge. Ignorance, therefore, I established, is the root of spiritual captivity. You will be as liberated as you are enlightened. You will be as liberated spiritually as you are informed. 
This is why you and I must pant for increasing measure of knowledge. If your yokes are not changing, it may mean that your knowledge is not changing. We therefore must be a people of knowledge, a people who read, a people who study the word of God, a people who listen to messages, a people who have the discipline of Bible study, Bible meditation, Bible reading, until the day star arises in our heart, bringing about a revolution in our space. So what I intend to do these six sessions is to bring some vital knowledge your way on how to handle loss or captivity if you find your way there. We've already dealt with the fact that if you're going to deal with corporate laws, by corporate laws, I'm talking about the captivity or laws that is brought upon you by the actions of another, probably a wife, a husband, a father, a child, a partner, or a friend. I established in the first service that people other than you can affect you if your eyes are not enlightened to know who they are. And I pray once again that in the name of the Lord Jesus, every acorn in your boat will be exposed. Every acorn in your camp will be exposed. Every Judas in your camp will be exposed. Every Jonah in your boat will be exposed. Everybody who is exerting a gravitational pull of captivity on your life and destiny, I pray that this month is your month of exposure. I pray that this month, my God, in the name of Jesus, will kindle the fire. The serpent will expose himself. In the name of Jesus, I pray that every viper that has fastened itself to you in your journey of life, this month, my God, will expose them. I pray that fake people that you have been building your life, your hope, and your expectations on, this month of August will be exposed. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray that everyone who is for you, who is with you, but who is not for you, this month they will ex they'll be exposed. I pray that everyone around you that is not for you will misbehave. They will reveal their true color. In the name of Jesus. There are prayers we must be praying from time to time. In Psalm 144, David prayed, Read me of strange children whose right hand are the hands of falsehood. He calls them strange waters. I pray for you. Every strange companion, every strange associate, every strange friend, every strange son, every strange daughter, people who are smiling before you but they are yapping behind you, my God will expose them. In the name of Jesus, I pray that this evening a mantle of alignment will come into your life. Everyone and everything in your space that is not yours, my God will show you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, let the shaking begin right now so that those things in your space that can be shaken will be shaken off and the things that can stand will remain. In the name of Jesus. I'm saying again, in the name of the Lord Jesus, let the shaking begin right now. Let the true nature of everyone in your space be revealed right now in Jesus' mighty name. So that is one level of captivity. Captivity brought upon you by the actions of another. But today I want to focus this evening on captivities we bring upon ourselves. Captivity, because sometimes there are captivities that come into our life because of the actions or the inactions of others. But there are also captivities and losses that come into our life as a result of our own personal sins, our own personal error. One thing that lengthens the time of people's captivity is the refusal to accept their responsibility whenever they are wrong. Hallelujah. And so if you're that kind of person, your captivity will be strong. Amen. So we want to look at, are there 
issues like this and how do we deal with this? There's no better example of this than the life of David. In 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse uh, 26, I think, then from to chapter 12 and verse 25. I'm not sure I'll be able to read all of this, but I'll try. In 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse 26, when the wife of Uriah heard that Uriah, her husband, was dead, she mourned for her husband, and when her mourning was over, David sent and brought her to his house, and he became his wife and bore him a son. But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. So what we're looking at here is what I call the magnum opus, <laughs> forgive me, of David's sin. This was the biggest sin, the defining sin of David's life. A little story here. One day, David was bored. And if you are bored and you don't manage it well, you are a few steps from becoming bad. So one day he was bored. And he was bored because at a time when kings were supposed to be at war, he chose to relax back at home. He delegated the kingly battles. There are battles that every king must fight. There are battles and challenges that every king must take on. There are battles in which a king must not be absent. But in David's case, David chose to delegate his battles to the lieutenants. Now, when you do something like that, you're about to fall. At that particular time, the Bible said he stood up from his room. I have a message on this on the power of pornography. You may need to look for that message, P-O-P, the power of pornography. And then from the roof of his house, he saw a, a, a woman taking, you know, her bath. Stop telling me that pornography cannot affect you. David's problem began from when he saw a naked opposite sex. Naked. And we are living in that age right now. Or age, I can call it the age of nakedness. <laughs> May that spirit not enter our church in Jesus' name. So he saw the woman taking his bath, her bath, and he sent for her. And who can say no to the king? He slept with her. But you know when God wants to catch you, all your plans won't work. He returned the woman back to the house only for the woman to discover that she was now pregnant, Bathsheba. So when she found out she was pregnant by David, she sent for the owner of the pregnancy. So David, when he saw that this had happened, Instead of addressing it, he attempted to cover it. I've said this and I'll say it once again. Every attempt to cover your sin will complicate it. I have a message out there, come clean. I think it will bless you. Every attempt to cover up your sin will complicate it. That's why whenever you're wrong, Come clean. Okay, if you don't come clean to man, come clean to God who knows men. So, he came clean. But instead of coming clean, he began to look for how to cover it. His first plan at covering it was to invite the wife of the man home, right? Uh, and the husband of the man home and to, you know, get the man to go back home to sleep with his wife 
so that he could push the pregnancy onto him. Unfortunately for David, Uriah was a man who was devoted to his duties, had a strong sense of duties, so instantly Uriah refused to go back home. The second night he came, saw Uriah there, he invited him, he got Uriah drunk. Now, so this guy moved from pornography, pornography, graduated to, to, to adultery, adultery, graduated to conspiracies to cover it up, conspiracies, graduated to the king getting his man drunk. Imagine that. Drunkenness. Still in his attempt to cover it, he saw that the man still in his drunken state still could not go back home. His statement to his king was that how can my king, my lord Joab, are you there, and the Ark of the Covenant be in the place of war, and I'm going back to do what to sleep with my wife? What a man. What a man. What a man who lived in the consciousness of his assignment. What a faithful man. What a sacrificial man. But in David's attempt to cover it up and all that, he saw that this man was so dutiful. And so he decided what he was going to do was he was going to give an instruction for his execution. Instead of killing him personally, what David now did, hallelujah, was to send a letter. He gave a letter to the man, to his boss, to put him in the position of a battle where valiant men were. Very powerful. It means that battles is in level. Our strength is in level. If a weak person positions himself in the place where valiant people are, you're coming down. May God give you wisdom to recognize the level of the battles you can adopt. So, by dropping him in that place where valiant men belong to, they approached the wall. And of course, Uriah died. So at the instruction of David, David had killed one of his most faithful men. There, he, this is where 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse 26 to verse 25. You will now think that he will feel remorse. Immediately after he had killed the husband, the woman mourned her husband. And immediately after mourning, David brought the woman back to his house. And... She became his wife and bore him a son. Every time I read that phrase, but the thing which David had done displeased the Lord. Now notice that footnote because David had done all manner. All manner. Pornography, murder, drunkenness. But the thing. Which David did displease the Lord. Now, whenever I read that portion of the Bible, something in me trembles. That you may you may think you have gotten away with it, but if God is displeased with it, watch out. The thing which David did displeased the Lord. You may please yourself, but are you conscious of the pleasure of God regarding your actions, your decisions, your behavior? But the thing which David did displeased the Lord. The older I grew, I become more sensitive, I become more sensitive to the pleasure of the Lord. But the thing which David did displeased the Lord. And from there, from chapter 12 to verse 25, verse 1 to verse 25, things began to unravel. What I noticed there, the Lord now had to send Nathan to David. And he came to him and said to him, there were two men. Now, listen to what he's saying here. There were two men. Now, notice here, this was something, this was David's actions. There are captivities that come as a result of our actions. 
And, and I pray for you that when that day comes, may God place you under prophetic ministry in the name of the Lord Jesus. Because you see, some the problem sometimes not just that you are wrong. Some of us are now in a place where we cannot be reached anymore. Do you know why I place myself under prophetic ministry? So that in case I am wrong, the prophetic will point it out. There's something about the prophetic ministry. If you, 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 know, you can't hide from it, it will find you out. It will, it will point out your case. It will read your email. It will, re, it will get to your issue. Now, watch this. The day you, 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 you displease the Lord, my prayer is that you will still be reachable by the prophetic. Because if you can no longer be reached by the prophetic, it is finished. That's what happened in the life of Saul. Not only did God not reply him, Samuel no longer regarded him. I pray for you that no matter what you do, may you not be beyond the reach of the prophetic in the name of the Lord Jesus. I pray that you will have a Nathan. What I noticed about David was David had seers. And what I noticed about David was that every single thing he did was documented by his seers. If you study the Bible book of Chronicles, he says the things that David did, are they not, are you there, written in the book of God and the writings of Nathan the prophet? So everybody may not know your issue. May you have a God that can point to you and say to you, you are the man. May you have a Nathan that when they open up their mouth, they will address your issue. Because if you don't have that, you can be destroyed. Pray for you. When I studied that, please give him that scripture. He says all the things David did. He says, I did not write it in the book. So what, what, what it means is that your prophet is supposed to be able to read your mail. Some of us are too coded for the prophetic. And things are going from bad to worse. Bad to worse. Please be careful when you are wrong and God can no longer read you with his word. Read you with his word. Be careful. Be reachable. Are you there? Be reachable. And there are different ways to do that. Number one is to fellowship with the Holy Ghost. Because if you're fellowship with the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost will point out where you are wrong. Another way to be reachable is to study the Word of God. If you expose yourself to the study of the Word of God, the Word will read you. It's like a, a, a double-edged sword. It will pierce to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit of bone and marrow. It will be a discern of the thought and the hitness of the heart. So to be reachable means to make yourself available to your prophet. Available to the word of God. Available to the spirit of God. So that in case there is something wrong, I, if your prophet can't point it out, may the word point it out. If the word can't point it out, may the scriptures point it out. Or else, it, you're finished. You're finished. There are people, I say right now, who are totally lost because they can no longer be reached. There must be at least one or two people that when they talk, they have a convicting influence on your heart. The Holy Spirit is there to do that. The Word of God is there to do that. Your prophets and your pastors are there to do that. If without these three forces I just mentioned, your life will spiral out of control. There are some now, church attendance, nana. Bible study, zero. Active relationship with a go, apostolic corporate view, zero. They are just living their life by themselves and, other, and their lives are spiraling out of control. Going from bad to worse. May that not be you in the name of the Lord Jesus. I deliberately want to be reachable. I deliberately want to be reachable. I deliberately want to be reachable. Because you see, the way of a man, you see, there's a way that seems right to a man. The end thereof can be the ways of death. I want to be reachable. I want my prophets to be able to write the chronicles of my strengths and my weaknesses. 
I want them. I, I, hey, you don't post for your doctor. I have a doctor now, Dr. Tayo Olabi. I don't form for him. I said, sir, this thing is, I'm not his doctor. I'm his pastor. He's my doctor. In the medical line, he's my boss. He said, sir, take this thing, take this thing, take this thing. This is what you take. I asked him, what is here? What is here? He tells me. What? He, he... So you can imagine if my, now let me say this. You can imagine if the pastor is open to the doctor, but the doctor is coded to the pastor. The pastor receives the ministry of the doctor, but the doctor, <laughs> I'm not prophesying. Dr. Ty is a good man. But you must be reachable. You must be reachable. We, we, you must have, that's why I attend meetings, you know, with my men of God. I attend meetings. I sit down. Sometimes I sit down for one week to be reached. So I listen to their messages holistically. I hear everything. To be reached. Especially the richer you are, the more intentional you have to be about being reachable. The richer you are, the more intentional you have to be about being reachable. Because when you have some little change, people know they want to tell you the truth again. Because, you know, they don't want to lose the pay. They don't want to lose the change. May you be reachable in the name of the Lord Jesus. And so you know what happened? The thing he did displeased the Lord. We must live in the consciousness of the pleasure and the displeasure of the Lord. The thing which he did, he, he thought he got away with it, but he displeased the Lord. Thank God, God sent Nathan to David. And he came to him and said, there were two men in one city. One was rich and the other was poor. The rich man had exceedingly many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing except one little ewe lamb which he had brought up and nourished. It grew up together with him, with his children. It ate of his own food and drank from his own cup and lay in his bosom. And it was like a daughter to him. And a traveler came to the rich man who, who refused to take from his own flock and from his own herd to prepare one for the wayfaring man who had come to him. But he took the poor lamb and prepared it for the man who had come to him. Now, I'd like you to see here where he was talking about lost. He calls it a traveler and he calls it a wayfaring man. Can I talk about that a little bit this morning? Lost is a traveler. Lost is a wayfaring man. Now, let me explain this. You see, if you can stand your ground, the temptation will come to pass. Are you there? A traveler, for instance, now does not live with you. For instance, there are times now that the urge to sin will come upon you, come upon you, uh, 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 as if, if you don't do me now, do me, do me, do me, do me, do me, do me now. I have to do me now. You must do me now. Check it. If you can wait it out, it will go to somebody else. <laughs> because it is a wayfaring man. We all go through pressures and temptations. Are you there? But some of us have realized it's a wayfaring man. It's a traveler. It's not a settler. It's a traveler. What that means, therefore, is that if you have the courage, the temerity, the strength to wait it out, to go to somebody else. Sin lies at the door. You, have you seen It lies. You knock, knock. Now you go open. Now you go open. Nobody says anything. Now you go open. <laughs> Now you go open now. Yeah. It's a wayfaring man. If you refuse to open, it can't come in. If you refuse to open, it can't come in. There's no temptation that has taken you and I, but such as is common, but God is faithful, who will not allow us to be tempted about that which you are able, but he will, with the same temptation, provide for us a way of escape, which means that anything God allows to come to you is because you can handle it. If the temptation came to you, it's because the capabilities to handle it is in you. Wait it out and it will go. It's a wayfaring man. And when it came to him, this man had his, he had a robust asset. He had concubines, he had wives, he had babes. He had, these were still the days when you could have babes. You know what I'm saying here? Yeah. It wasn't a time of Christianity. Was, this guy had, had, he, he could not have had less than 50 women. And instead of, re instead of directing his passion to what was his, 
He allowed the passion stray into somebody else's field. And that, that's the issue. You see, many times when this thing comes to us, it, we, instead of directing the energy into the resources that are within our purview, we have a tendency to direct the fire into the field of what isn't ours. Many years ago, the Lord scolded me with a particular scripture. Please, you have to give them the scripture. He said, if a man puts his beast to feed in another man's vineyard of his, the best of his own vine, shall he make restitution. Give them the scripture. That is, that is when it, you want to feed, direct your beast into your vineyard. <laughs> Ew, blessed people, this night, yeah. You'll be tempted, direct your feet. Auntie, direct your feet, your beast. Uncle, that beast between your legs, direct it into your vineyard. And usually, he had enough. He said, sometimes what we have is not enough for us. We have to redirect somewhere else. And then, eventually, you find out we mess things up. Fire in the fireplace is an asset. Fire on your bed. Fire on your bosom. He said, can you take hot coal on your bosom, product of the fire, and not be burnt? May we have the courage, hallelujah, and the strength and the grace to direct our fires into the appropriate channels. Fire is not bad. Fire in the wrong channels. Fire in the wrong place is what is bad. And so what he did, instead of directing the fire in the direction of what it was, he now took, he had many, then he chose to take from the person who had won. Remember that particular scripture. That's how people sacrifice their best. It says here, give them that scripture again. He said, if a man takes his beast to feed in another man's vineyard. I know what I'm talking about though. He said, of the, of the best of his own vineyard shall he make restitution. You know why now I'm singing my Davido song for women? I'm unavailable. <laughs> they know they see me. Yeah, you know what I'm how did dance itself? You know, I don't even know this one. You know, there's a song like that. I'm unavailable. They know this me. You know why? I'm finding out that sincerely, if you allow your beast feed in a vineyard that does not belong to you, you it will cost you your best. Of your best, you make restitution. Of your best. It will cost you your best. Therefore, you must be the kind of person who says, this is mine. This is not mine. This is mine. This is not mine. This is mine. This is not mine. This man is mine. This man is not mine. This woman is mine. This one is not mine. This money is mine. This one is not mine. This thing is mine. This one. This glory is mine. This honor is mine. This is not mine. This one is mine. This is not mine. And when it directs you into what is not yours, restrain yourself. Or else, what was supposed to be your best will now become this thing has affected many of us. May you, I'm talking prophetically now. That is where you missed it. That's where your accent dropped. It's time to take, use this word. Put it there and recover yourself. Get back to order. Where are the mercy? Nathan is talking to you this morning. Nathan! Is talk now, let me also share something here. I, I think I'll tweet about this sometime. You see, another thing that is responsible for emotional entanglement, why am I talking about emotions here, is this idea idea that we need to be friends with somebody to solve your problem it's a lie now this idea that for me to solve your problem we have to be close is a lie from the pit of hell because now when you feel that to solve someone's problem you have to be close to them it will now that closeness now leaves room for entanglement. Does your doctor need to be close to you to solve your problem? Does your banker need to be close to you to solve your problem? Does your pastor need? Does he take all that? And then sometimes in the bid to claim to solve people's problems, we now get emotionally involved with them. You don't need to be close to anybody to solve your problems. I tell you the truth. You study scripture. The problem is the problem. You attend to the problem. But it doesn't mean you should be entangled with the individual. In fact, they will tell you in professional counseling, when you're entangled, 
gold with the person, you have to refer that doctor. In fact, they will tell you there's a certain level of detachment that is needed for you to be professional. That's why they'll tell you there are certain issues that a doctor now may not be able to operate on the child because they are too close. That's how you must know how to maintain professional detachment if you're going to be effective in solving strategic problems. There's a detachment needed for you to be objective in addressing that problem. And many things driving the entanglement we see in our generation. Is this idea that we have to be close. They have to be chatting you up at, at, at 11, at 12, at 1 a.m., at 2 a.m. for you to solve their problem. Ah, uh, fam, bully, boy. I don't know the English of it. The handshake, don't reach arm like this. Hallelujah. Let me rush because of time. No, 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 no. So, instantly when he played the scenario, when you talk to kings, you don't talk to kings directly. They can cut off your head. <laughs> Amen. Go and ask John the Baptist. <laughs> you don't accuse kings. So he played this scenario so that the king could get the message. But look at what David's anger was greatly aroused against the man. And he said to Nathan, As the Lord lives, the man who has done this shall surely die. He shall restore fourfold for the Lamb. We see number one is beware of sin. Number two, beware. Now, so this man was in, this was somebody who was in injustice. But because the scenario permitted to somebody, he became judgmental. And beware when you are unjust and then you're not passing judgment on injustice. You who say people should not commit adultery, do you commit adultery? You who are saying people should not steal, do you steal? Because your judgment will be swifter if you do it and you judge it. So we see here, number two, that we have to be very careful about you know, sin. Then we have to be careful about having a judgmental spirit because the, with the same measure which you judge, you will be judged. Now, Papa Tai was gone to be with the Lord. People were calling me. I, I don't even know some people that it takes bad news for them to call you. That's something like that. Now, bad news. That is, you have been on their phone now forever. They don't call you. They don't remember you. Just a bad news breaks. Bah, they start calling you. They are bad people. It is. It takes bad things to happen for them to remember your existence. They are not really interested in your welfare. They are just there to talk nonsense. Let me leave that alone. May God give you some few good people in Jesus' mighty name. Be aware of anybody that it takes bad news, bad news, that bad news. They are like bad news. Did you hear what is happening? Did you hear? Did you? Did you hear? They are like purveyors of bad news. But let me jump more time now. His anger was now aroused. Now, he was unjust. And then he, he, the unjust now stepped into the office of judgment. Beware of the judgmental spirit. Because with the measure, when you saw that scripture in Matthew, the measure with which you judge, you shall be judged. So he said, the guy will restore fourfold because he did this thing and he had no pity. Then Nathan said to David, you are the man. You are the man. You are the man. And this morning, are you aware that you are the man? I'm pointing to you. You are the woman. And that sincerely, listen to me, in this age of positive thinking, positive messages, you need some messages that will point to you and say, you are the man. You are the man. <laughs> you are the man. I'm the man. Because sometimes when you judge, you judge because you've forgotten that you are the man. And even if you are not even the man, you were the man. And even if you have never been the man and you are not the man, you could be the man. But for the mercy and the grace of God. So the prophet pointed. And I pray that in the name of the Lord Jesus, in these last days, May the prophetic mantle on this ministry in every service point us out. May it point me out. May it point you out. May it point husbands out. May it point wives out. May people who are doing wrong not ever feel comfortable in the, in the church of God, which is known as the ground and the pillar of truth. May every time this doors are open. May we, may we be pointed out in the areas where we are wrong. Uh, may we be pointed out in the areas of our injustice so that we have the privilege of adjustment. Don't go to a church where 
you know nothing. They never, they preach a whole year. They don't read your email. You're in the wrong place. If you attend a good church at least once every while, the message will be like they are reading your email. Do you tell Pastor Pabin? Do you tell? That's how you know you're in the right church. That, ah, you love me so much that you, you, you mentioned this issue. This morning, God is reading somebody's email. You are the man. You're prophet. You're the man. And sometimes we forget that fact. So what now happened, my God? What now happened? Let me rush now. Instantly. I, I saw that his, his, his attitude was different because now how do you deal with, 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 with these issues? He, he repented. He said, you are the man. I anointed you. As the king of Israel, I delivered you from the hand of Saul. I gave you your master's house. I gave you your master's wives. I gave them into your keeping. I gave you the house of Israel and Judah. If that had been too little, I would have given you much more. Why then did you despise the commandment of the Lord to do evil in the sight? You've killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword. You've taken his wife to be your wife. You've killed him with the sword of the people. Now, therefore, the sword shall never depart from your house. Have you seen that scripture? Because you have despised me. You've taken the wife of Uriah to be your wife. Thus says the Lord, behold, I will. <laughs> raise up adversity against you from your own house and I will take your wives from before your eyes and I will give them to your neighbor and they shall lie with your wives in the sight of the sun for you did it secretly but this thing will happen openly and look at David's response he said I have sinned against the Lord acknowledgement you see whenever God points you out what you need to offer is acknowledge not deny I'm the man. I have sinned against the Lord. Nathan now said to him, The Lord also has put away your sin. You shall not die. However, because by this deed you have given occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme, the child who is born to you shall surely die. Then Nathan departed from his house. Now let me explain this. Let us always be conscious of this because it's saying, we are custodians of God's reputation. We are not perfect, but we are custodians of divine reputation. And he's saying that as we begin to mature in God, we have to begin to live our lives in such a way as to protect the reputation of God. Because if because of us, men blaspheming him, what we birth as a result is going to die. This now brings me into probably the final. So you know what happened? The Lord struck the child. And it became ill. He called the child it. And David therefore pleaded with the Lord for the child. And David fasted and went in and lay all night on the ground. So the elders arose and went to him to raise him from the ground. But he would not, nor did he eat food. Then on the seventh day, it came to pass that the child died. So we see here, because as a result of that action, people were going to blaspheme the Lord. God said what was birthed as a result of blasphemy to the Lord. Would die. So let's be very careful that we don't allow our actions, our behavior, our bring about blasphemy. Because if we do that, it opens up the door to death. Man, what happened now? But I saw here David now began to pray. As we begin to round up, David fasted. David began to pray. David fasted. Of course, God had spoken to him that the child was going to die because of the blasphemy. David began to pray to see if he was he was he could change the mind of God on the matter but you see sometimes i thank god that sometimes he allows some things die because if those things don't die there will be a continual reminder of how are you getting imagine for instance if that child had lived that child would have been a continual reminder. I want to thank God for allowing some relationships to die. I want to thank God for allowing some habits to die. I want to thank God for allowing some things to die because if those things had not died, today the fact of those realities would have been hanging over our head. 
Hey, I know what I'm talking about. No time to talk about this. Sometimes it's the mercy of God to your future that doesn't want the enemy to have a proof, something to hold on to. That brings about death in those issues. So in spite of his fast, the child died. How did David deal with the loss? My time is almost up. I can't pray this evening. How did David deal with the loss? The servants we were afraid to tell him. And they said, indeed, while the child was alive, we spoke to him. He would not heed our voice. How can we tell him that the child is dead? He may do some harm. When David saw his servants were whispering, David perceived that the child was dead. Then David said, is the child dead? Now, let me share this. How do you deal with things that are dead? Number one, confirm its death. Is the marriage dead? Is the child dead? Is it the relationship dead? Sometimes you really have to confirm that this thing is dead. Doctors, confirm the death. Sometimes a marriage can be dead. Sometimes a relationship can be dead. Sometimes things can die. Sometimes things can die. Confirm the death. Once the death is confirmed, look at what happened here. He confirmed and he said he is dead. How do you handle? This came because of his own personal sin. But look at what he did. Look at how he did it. Number one, confirm the death. Number two, once you have confirmed that it is dead, David arose from the ground. Are you there? Arise. That's number two. Once you confirm it is dead, arise. 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 Number two, wash yourself. That's number two. How do you wash yourself? Once this, you are going through a chapter of death, you now need to stay under the washing of the water by the word. Are you there? Allow the word wash you off the thing that died. Wash the sin off you. Wash the guilt off you. Wash the pain off you. Wash the regret off you. You see, sometimes you go through an experience and you need to stay under the word. You don't even have to preach. Sometimes you need to say, sir, I just went through a, a sad experience. I just went through this. Sir, can I just sit down under the word for the next one month, for the next two months, for the next 40 days? Sir, can I just come to church? Um, sir, I just committed adultery. I just came out of an adulterous experience. Can I just come to church and just allow the word wash me? Hallelujah. So number one, you get off it. Confirm if it's dead. Once it's dead, arise from that particular point. Are you there? Number two, once you have arisen from that place, expose yourself to the word of the washing of the water by the wall. Number three, what do you do? He says now, and he anointed himself. Go for empowerment. Go for empowerment. Allow your head to begin to grow again. The anointing of God on your life, in spite of your failure, in spite of your weakness, is renewable. Get back into fellowship. Get back into prayer. Get back into fasting. Get back into relation. Allow the power, allow the air to grow again. You know, I was thinking some time ago, a man ago was sharing this about, about David, and I think I need to quickly wrap this up, about Samson. He said the problem with Samson is that even though he had made that mistake, but he did not wait until his, his vision was rekindled. Are you getting what I'm saying? And then number three, now ask that. You don't need to ask to die for what you have done wrong. Get up from that place. Confirm if he's dead. If he's dead, he's dead. Are you there? Once he's dead, get up. Quit like a man. Quit like a woman. Number two, get yourself in, a, in an atmosphere where the word of God will reach you on, on, a, on an extensive level. Number three, begin to develop the faculties of your anointing again. Get yourself anointed. Number four, change the garments you are wearing. Remove those dead clothes. Remove those things. Change the garments. Don't let what you've gone through show up and change your garment. Number four, go to the house of God and worship. Don't let what died keep you from the house of God because the house of God is the source of the word, is the source of the anointing, is the source where your garment will be changed. So you have to, he woke up from that place and went straight to the house of God, straight to the house of God. And then you know what he did? He worshiped. 
Worship brings about exchange. Sincerely, the greater the debt, the greater the pain, the greater the less, the deeper your worship is. One thing about pain is it opens the door to worship. You know, it is when men disappoint us, we can now begin to scratch the depth of the intimacy. At that point, we now begin to go to God for the things we used to go to men and women for. We begin to confide more in the Lord. We begin to talk to him. You get up and go to the Lord. You worship. And then after he had worshipped, he didn't go to his house first. Though. He went to worship first. Then after he had, he had satisfied the ordinance of worship. Hallelujah. He now returned to his house. Are you there? And he said, oh, <laughs> Bring the food here. And they brought him the food. And he ate. Then he said, what, what kind of strange man is this? What is this that, that you've done? You fasted and wept for the child when he was alive. But when the child died, you arose and ate food. And he said, while the child was alive, I fasted and I wept. For I said, Who can tell whether the Lord will be gracious to me? What that the child may live. But now that the child is dead, why should I fast? Can I bring him back? I will go to him, but he will never return to me. So you know what happened? <laughs> so you see his mindset. You see, you, you don't live in denial. Don't be saying the marriage is not dead. The marriage, the talk, the marriage is not dead. The marriage is dead. You know what? Dead. Some relations are dead. Some things are dead. Sometimes the pain is exacerbated by hoping for life where some things are already dead. So he said, no, no, this is dead. This is dead. This is dead. I'm not going back here again. All right? I'm not going back here again. So, so this is dead. I'm moving on. I'm, he moved forward. And then you know what happened? He now went to Bathsheba. He comforted his wife. You comfort everybody that's involved in the matter. He comforted his Bathsheba. Then you know what happened? He engaged her again. He went in onto her and lay with her. Hallelujah. The Bible is so intentional. And so she bare a son and called the name Solomon. Now the Lord loved him and he will send the word to the bad hand and call the name of the child Jedi because the Lord, my time is up. You see here about six or seven things. Number one, confirm if it's dead. Number two, get up. Number three, wash yourself. Number four, go for empowerment. Number five, go to the house of the Lord. Are you there? Worship. Number six, back to your house when you're done with worship. Are you getting what I'm saying here? Eat, sweet, start eating. Don't be going slim. Slim about one husband that left you. Are you getting what I'm saying here? Be, in fact, looking better, doing better is a more peppering thing, you know? Do look better, look fatter. If you didn't have boobs, go remove your boobs. Remove the bummer. If you didn't have, edit, you didn't have boobs, remove it. We're not beautiful. Become more beautiful. You get what I'm saying here? Leave the person and move on. Come and kill me here. And then you, you start, you know, living your life. And let the glory of God take over. And then you, you comfort everybody involved. And you say, okay, Bathsheba, come. And all that, yeah, it was a mistake at the level. But it's amazing that through their mistake, God now birthed their miracle. It's amazing that it was through Bathsheba. Sometimes I don't understand why God does that. How God can bring out his purpose through our mess. His message through our mess. I don't know how God can still now bring forth the king. That's God. And then he now chose. And get this. Yeah, yeah, you did some things wrong. But through what you did wrong, God can still bring out something he loves. And then from it came out Solomon. Hallelujah. And God loved him. And then the one he sent to judge him now, he now sent to a farm. Uh, this is the real stuff. This is the real guy. I love this guy. And this guy is going to be king. I also wanted to show you there that the Bible is very detailed. The Bible doesn't say she knew. She knew. He said she lay with her. You see that scripture? Final verse. He lay. In other words, the Bible still did not reckon the woman as a wife. But God said, I, I, this face, I've removed this face. I've, I've, I've passed this face. And, and, and this face is over. And Solomon came out of it. And Solomon became probably one of the greatest kings of Israel. Later, I will explain to you that also he also could not escape the conditions of his birth, you know, because now his dad was just pornography when it was his time. This guy had 700 wives and 300 concubines. Sometimes the condition of your birth, if you don't, not, you're not, not, not tough and serious and wise about it, can affect the outcome of what you birth. But that's all I want to say today. So you must understand this is how to navigate when you notice the personal loss, maybe your personal mistake, your personal errors. It doesn't have to be the end of it. You have to have the right attitude to it. Follow this process and let God birth something new out of you. I've overshot the time tonight. 
but I know God spoke to you. I want to pray for you tonight. Grace, as one who has found mercy and favor, I can't tell you how many mistakes I've made in my journey in life, but my life has been mistakeful. Hallelujah. Mistake, F-U-L-L, as one who has obtained mercy. I pray that every area of your personal errors, your personal failures, your personal inadequacies, let the mercy of God snatch you out. And in spite of all you've been through, all you've done wrong, where you've been, in spite of the sin, in spite of your weaknesses, in spite of your failures, my God, bring forth a Solomon out of you in the name of the Lord Jesus. My, my time is short, you know, so you just go back and just follow the process. Follow the process. Follow the process and let God do what he wants to do. I can't pray tonight, but I know the Lord spoke to you. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord represent opportunities to you to act more intelligently, with greater integrity, greater excellence. May grace snatch you out. May mercy snatch you out. May the sin pass in the name of the Lord Jesus. May grace to correct your error. And you know the beauty of the David event corrected error. In, the, in his older years, you know, I saw something there. When, 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 when he now became sick, forgive me for the time I, I took. And they said, well, what can we do to David to revive David? So let's go bring a virgin. And so they brought a virgin, Abishag, to him. And the, the, the lady took care of him. But please give him the scripture. I said, but the, give him the scripture. He said, but the king did not know her. It meant that David had, he had now died. He had become broken. He had learned. So he had learned so much now that, so much so that when he now had the legitimate opportunity to engage a fresher woman, he acted more intelligent. He said, but the king did not know her. The king did not know her. Which means no matter what you've done, what you've been, you can come to a point of brokenness, a point of excellence, a point of integrity and authority where those things that you used to do you do no more. And I'm praying that in the name of the Lord Jesus, in these three days and in this season, your personal captivities will be destroyed. And that mercy will prevail over you in Jesus' mighty. Don't give up on yourself. Just follow the process. Something great is going to come out of you. By God's grace, I'll be back in the morning tomorrow. Don't miss it for anything in the world. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Join us this week for the August Three Days of Grace and Glory theme, War Against Loss and Lack. Ministering live is Reverend Deji Olabode. Time, 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. daily. Date, Tuesday 15th to Thursday 17th August. Join us live on YouTube, Enthronement Assembly, and on MixLR, Enthronement NG. Enthronement University Announcement. August cohort classes for 100 level Faculty of Church membership and 300 level Faculty of Christian Convictions will hold on Saturdays, August 19th, 26th, and September 2nd and 9th, 2023. Venue, The Latitude, 310A Titila Yuade Doing Street, Omole Phase 1. Time, 11.30 a.m. Registration is compulsory via the link displayed. Remember, closed door policy applies. Dates for other classes will be announced soon. Watch out. The Love Dynamics Campus train is on the move and our next stop is the Lagos State University of Science and Technology, formerly Laspotec Ikurudu. Join us by 12 noon on Wednesday, the 23rd of August at the 700-seater hall of the Lagos State University of Science and Technology. Color of Love Conference featuring Honey Tongue, MCD, Destin Brothers, Kid Steppers, and so much more. Your host is Deji Olabode. Be there.